In this video, we'll be talking about the asymptotic equipartition property or shortly referred to as AEP. Consider a biased coin which is 4 times more likely to turn up tails than heads. Suppose we toss it 5 times, how many tails do you expect? All tails? Let us see. First, note that there are 32 possible outcomes in the form of these sequences. Let us look at one of them, say the all tail sequence and compute its probability. Since the probability of tails is 4 by 5 and the tosses are independent, we simply multiply 4 by 5 5 times to obtain the probability. Similarly, the probability of some other sequence can also be obtained by multiplying the corresponding probabilities. Let us compute the probability of another sequence with 4 tails. The probability turns out to be the same as the sequence above. So, when we compute the probability of a sequence, only the proportion of heads and tails matter, not the relative position. To obtain the probability of observing 4 tails, we need to consider these 5 sequences and add up their probabilities. It is interesting to note that even though the probability of all tails is more than the probability of any of these sequences, the probability of observing 4 tails is more than the probability of observing 5 tails. Since we are only concerned with the number of tails, you can combine the probabilities of sequences containing that many tails and write down the total probability in this table here. Let us look at a plot of these probabilities with the fraction of tails for 5 tosses. You can see that the peak at point 8 here corresponds to sequence with 4 tails and 1 head. On observing the neighbors around this peak, the probability is reasonably high. Let's continue to toss and pause at 10 tosses. Now the sum of probabilities of neighbors of the peak is starting to increase, but not so close to 1 yet. Let's keep at it and go all the way till 100 tosses. Now, Observe that the probabilities concentrate more around point 8, that is, the sum of probabilities of the sequence having approximately 4 fifth the fraction of tails is getting closer to 1. This means that the chance of getting a fraction of tails far away from the actual probability of tails is going down to 0 as we keep on tossing. So with larger number of tosses, typically we see sequences that have around point 0.8 fraction of tails which is nothing but the probability of the coin turning up tails. Let us go back to the case of 10 tosses. We observe that the most probable event is the one when the fraction of tails is the same as its probability. Let us take a sequence from here which has 8 tails and 2 heads and compute its probability. This is nothing but 1 by 5 to raised to the 2 multiplied by 4 by 5 raised to the 8 since the tosses are independent. By exponentiation and taking logarithm and subsequently doing a series of modifications, we arrive at the following expression. Feel free to pause the video here and understand these steps. This quantity in the exponent here is special and is called entropy. It is denoted by h and is a function of probability. So the required probability is nothing but 2 raised to minus l times the entropy. So what does this quantity that we call the entropy actually represent? It represents the amount of randomness in the biased coin which generates heads or tails. Let's try computing it for 3 different coins with probability of tails being 0 0.8, 0 0.5 and 1. We had already computed the entropy for our biased coin. For a fair coin which is equally likely to turn up heads or tails, that is with the probability of half, the entropy is 1. Lastly, for a coin which has both sides to be tails, the entropy is 0. This intuitively makes sense, since we already know that the outcome is always going to be tails and hence it is not random. Indeed, the coin with probability 0.5 has maximum entropy and is most random. Our coin with tails probability 0.8 is somewhere in between. We have seen that the entropy naturally shows up as the key term in determining the probability of a specific pattern. For a sequence with 80 tails and 20 heads, that is a sequence with fraction of tails 0.8, the probability was 2 power minus L times the entropy. What about the sequences very similar to this sequence, say those with 79 tails and 21 heads? Checking through similar calculations as before, we arrive at an expression that looks very similar to our expression of entropy. You can notice here that this value is indeed close to the entropy. In fact, all sequences in the typical set occur with more or less equal probabilities. This effect is more pronounced when the number of tosses becomes larger and asymptotically as the number of tosses goes to infinity, the probability of sequences in the typical set becomes the same. This is referred to as the asymptotic equipartition property or AEP. 
Let's look into the typical set T a bit more. How many sequences does T contain? Here is a neat trick to compute it. Note that the probability of the typical set is always at most 1. And this probability is just the sum of the probabilities of the sequences that T contains. We have seen that all of them have roughly the same probability. And so, the probability of the typical set is just the number of sequences in T multiplied by this common probability factor. This yields bound on the size of the typical set T. Let us see it for a sequence of length 100. There are 2 to the raised to the 73 sequences in the typical set. However, the total number of possible sequences are 2 raised to the 100, which is a much larger number. As an application of AEP, let's look at data compression. Imagine Alice has a biased coin which she tosses 100 times and she wants to convey the outcomes to Bob. Each outcome can be expressed as a single bit, a 0 or a 1, and therefore she needs to communicate 100 bits. But is there a better scheme? We'll see that we can communicate using fewer bits with the help of AEP. From our understanding of AEP, we know that there are 2 power LH sequences that are typical, which for our example translates to about 2 raised to the 73 sequences. Recall that most of the time Alice will be observing one of these typical sequences. But how will she encode it? A single bit can represent two possibilities. In a similar way, if there are four possibilities, they can be represented using two bits, which is log 4 to the base 2 bits. And if there are eight possibilities, it requires log 8 to the base 2 bits. So encoding the typical set which has 2 to the 73 elements will require 73 bits. Here is a scene that Alice can use. Alice divides the set of sequences into two parts. One part contains the typical sequences and the other part contains the rest of the sequences. She first conveys to Bob whether her sequence is typical or not. This only requires one bit. Next, if her sequence is typical, which will be the case most of the time, she only needs to send 73 bits. From 100 bits, we are down now to 73 bits. If she is unlucky though and the sequence is atypical, she will need to send 100 bits. But on average, over several experiments, she will actually be sending fewer than 100 bits. Moreover, if she has to convey outcomes of larger number of tosses, this reduction in the number of bits is more pronounced. So finally, as a takeaway from this video, we have seen that out of all the possible 2 power L sequences of heads or tails of length L, there exists a subset of 2 to the power of L times H of P sequences where any two sequences have approximately equal probability and the sum of the probabilities of sequences appearing in this set amounts to 1, approximately. We have also seen an application of AEP towards data compression.